Welcome listeners to Kyle and Cody's Cult Cinema Cast. I'm Kyle. I'm Cody. And we've been gone for a little bit. Yeah, sorry, we've been working on a side project and just haven't uh, gotten it off the ground. Uh, I started a new job, which doesn't help. That's more or less the issue. I started a new job, we've been working on a side project, and I just kind of delayed any uh, anything on this side. So, sorry about that. Hopefully the next one won't take as long. This week we're doing uh, the 2015 Victor Frankenstein film. Uh, called Victor Frankenstein. Yeah, I saw this... No, wait, I didn't see it in theaters. I thought it was... I wanted to, and then it never came. I think the Canada, because I was in the city at that point, and I never came to the city theaters, to my knowledge. So. I don't really blame them for not picking this up, but... Yeah. I like... Like, I was... I kind of liked it. Um, I don't like the ending. So it came out in 2015, and it came out alongside, like, Creed, which already has, like, a whole, like, people who like Rocky are gonna go watch Creed. Mm -hmm. And it came out alongside uh, The Good Dinosaur, so it's got that weird level of obscurity between those two points that anybody walking into a theater is probably going to go watch Creed because you're an adult. Or the good dinosaur because you're you have kids, and I guess another couple of movies was Brooklyn, which I don't know what that is. Um, Spotlight, which once again don't know what that is, and Trumbo, yeah. which has yeah. Brian Cranston in it. So yeah, no, um, I don't I don't actually know that this made the theaters in Canada for whatever reason, but um, the movie failed financially. I only actually saw it on TV, I think. Yeah, I saw this on like the movie channel or something. But I was um I was I did see this the trailer for this and was fairly excited for it. It had some promise in my opinion, hmm. like Daniel oh, yeah. Radcliffe, James McAvoy. It was written by Max Landis, who I think I've talked about a couple times on the podcast. Um he wrote uh the screenplay for uh Dirk Gently, which was a TV show that had uh, uh, yeah. Elijah Wood in it, and it was really good. I liked Elijah Wood, although apparently like he's really not a good person. He's Oof. a good writer, not a good person. So it's it's always weird when you're like, oh, whatever, you know, what else did he do? Because like, I liked his, his work in Dirk Gently, and then you like Wikipedia search him, and it's like, Oh, he has multiple allegations of like um, sexual misconduct uh, uh, up against him and stuff like that, and like pending court trials. And it's like, okay, well, <laughs> never mind. He's not that great of a <laughs> writer to really warrant it. I don't know who directed it, though. Oh, uh, Paul McGoigan? He, uh, hasn't done much he did a movie called push which i vaguely remember about here and about i think it's oh, that's, um, it's a chris evans movie yeah like really um, early chris evans movie and it's actually really good if you if you want to look like watch a half decent movie sit down and watch push really huh um it's about a guy who who, who uh gets telekinetic powers and he's like running around hovering guns and shooting guns with his telekinetic powers it's actually kind of cool but he's also uh, done like a I few uh like, oh, go ahead I, I i was gonna say i think prior to this the only other like movie that i know that chris evans had played in before this uh was of course like the fantastic four in like 2007 and then uh Scott Pilgrim vs. the World in 2010. He was in The Losers? Was like the yeah. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, apparently. Huh. Like the animated one, or? Uh, the 2007 TNT movie. Yeah, the animated TNT. one, yeah. With uh, Kevin Smith, Patrick Stewart, and Sarah Michelle Gellar. 
McGuigan also has done some uh, episodes of the like some uh, some arcs of the Sherlock TV show. So I think he's done like three or four of those. But yeah, it's like I said, I, I, I remember watching this on like movie channel because I was really excited about it and it never came out in uh, the theater in Regina. So um, I watched it and I, I liked it, but I didn't, I, I remember like, I never liked a movie and like disagreed with the ending more, but like still liked the movie afterwards, which is a weird thing to pull off. Normally like a really bad ending, they, it kind of ruins the movie, but I didn't feel like it ruined the movie here for me. Oh, and I guess we didn't really talk about the, the side cast here. Uh, James McAvoy is like, and Daniel Radcliffe, of course, post Harry Potter. Um, but it also stars like Charles Dance, who played uh, Tywin Lannister in like Game of Thrones, and then Andrew Scott, who actually played uh, Moriarty in the uh, Sherlock Holmes TV series. It's the, I guess, protagonist of the story kind of <laughs> like the side villain yeah um yeah we're talking uh turpin the the cop yeah yeah he's um he's very much like uh almost like nine tenths of a sherlock and like he's really flexing his uh the director's really flexing his sherlock muscles here and this movie kind of reminds me loosely of like the the American Sherlock Holmes movies with like Robert Downey Jr. because there's some sort of like uh, shared visual effects themes in there. They kind of do that same thing in that movie and this movie where they like do the X rays, although for different reasons. Yeah, and I like I like the uh, I liked uh, Robert Downey Jr.'s um, Sherlock Holmes. I know some people are, like, weirdly on the fence about it. I talked to my sister-in-law, Victoria, about it, and she's like, yeah, I, I don't like the the portrayal of Robert Downey Jr. as Sherlock because he's he's not weird enough. Like, they don't really go into, like, the whole, like, Sherlock, like, uh, metric. <laughs> At least, like, Cumberbatch was, like... like like emotionally distant enough this guy was kind of on par i also really di didn't like the the whole like oh like they're both doctors so they're both really good at like fighting because they know where to hit somebody type ordeal not all like doctors are like expert martial arts artists at to any like point in time so I didn't feel it was, like, really egregious until, like, the final fight scene. It's really rough there, where, like, it's really the points put in. Um, like, it, it, there's a little bit of it in, like, the open, like, the fight scene near the beginning. But I think that more comes across them being, like, clever. Um, because they're, like, mm -hmm. super scientists, so, sort of. And, like, it works a lot better there, because they're, like, using tricks. Um... And whatnot, but I think in the uh, the finale, where they're kind of like brute forcing it, it doesn't work as well. And really, again, it gets to my point about the ending, where the ending is just like really should have done something else with it, because mm -hmm. the um the ending of this movie, uh, like you think it's leading up to like essentially the the beginning of like the Frankenstein Frankenstein novel. Because this movie's a prequel, but it doesn't. But you think it's gonna you think it's gonna do like sort of that thing that the end of uh, Star Wars: The Clone Wars did, where it like leads up to the big event of the series, but um, or the book, um, but it doesn't. It's just kind of mm -hmm. like, oh no, this is a full prequel. Nothing in this movie happens, and it just doesn't uh, work very well for reasons we'll get into when we get there. And this movie lost like six million dollars. Yeah, it well it made it had like a 40 million dollar budget and it and it made 34 million dollars, which um you get half of that 
box office money. So that means uh, they made eight, like eighteen million dollars. So they lost like twenty-two million dollars. Yeah, yeah, it's um, pretty rough. There's also the fact uh, there's a little weirdness over the fact that like I don't think Victor Frankenstein is German in this. Actually, no one is German in this. Everyone seems to be English. Like, there's even like some points where English it like would have made a lot of sense for uh, like uh, the film to like drift English? into some German, but it never happens. Yeah, because um, like Victor Frankenstein was a uh, like within like the okay maybe not. I always thought Victor Frankenstein was spelled with a K, not a C. But, um, you mean in the Victor part? Yeah. No, no, I don't think it has been. I mean, I suppose you could, but it, yeah, I think um, maybe that's more authentically German. But I don't know. I think you could spell it with a K, but also, they don't. Like, really forgot that like a, a year prior to this movie coming out, I Frankenstein came out. Yeah, wasn't that supposed to be a Dark Universe thing? Uh, I'm not actually 100% sure. Hold on, is it Universal? No, it's Lionsgate. It's I, Frankenstein, is Lionsgate. Lionsgate. Who's the guy in I, Frankenstein? Uh, Aaron Urquhart. Eckhart? E-C-K-H-A-R-T Eckhart? <laughs> I He's... said Urquhart. Urquhart's definitely wrong. It's Eckhart. He's the guy who played uh, Two Face in the Batman movies, like the good ones. Yeah, Aaron Eckhart. Yeah, that's for sure. He doesn't show up on the Google for whatever reason. I think there's also, uh, yeah, this movie stars McAvoy and uh, Daniel Rad, James McAvoy and Daniel Radcliffe uh, at points where they're fairly popular, and these are both actors I pretty well like. Like, I generally think they're both pretty mm -hmm. cool. I think this is... Is this same year as X-Men Future Past? Um, No, uh, Days of Future Past is 2014. So this takes... This is a year after that movie. So he's pretty... Uh, James McAvoy is pretty hot off that. Yeah, you'd think, like, he, he, some people would just coast after a while. Like, Radcliffe is coasting. And I'm pretty sure, like, McAvoy is probably coasting at this point in time after uh, Future Pass, 2016's Apocalypse. Um, yeah, um, what's he been in lately? Oh, uh, I guess he was like in... Glass Split. He was in Split and Glass. Dark Phoenix. Um, he was in It Chapter um, 2. He was in the television series His Darkest Materials and. uh... 2019 he did do the the voice of the character dream in the neil gaiman's audible adaption of uh the sandman which i think is on its third or fourth part and i can't stress how good that is if you really like the sandman universe please do go listen to it on audible it's really good for an audiobook but yeah those are both actors i really like but they didn't um I don't know. They, I, they've never. And I don't think either of them's. I like those actors, but I don't think either of them's like a, uh, like, brilliant actor. They're just kind of in movies I like, which I think is part of the issue. But yeah, I think like more so like the fact that I grew up with Radcliffe is like, kind of like one of my biggest draws. And I think after, like, like his current, like, work schedule is, like, he just kind of picks what he likes to do now. He did, like, Swiss Army Man. He did a romantic comedy earlier. Um, Guns Akimbo, which we've done on the podcast. Um, he was Weird Al in the Weird Al. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, and I'm a really big fan of McAvoy. Like, um, like he's like, I, I really like all the X, uh, all the McAvoy era X-Men movies. I like, uh, I mean, Fe Dark Phoenix wasn't 
yeah, it could have been. It was all right, but it like I didn't care for a lot of it. But I like all of them pretty well. The first, yeah, first class is all right. Uh, and I, he's also in like Wanted, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. Wanted is just okay. I I I I, I love it. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I I probably wouldn't do a Wanted episode, but mostly because we've done a lot of my we've done a lot of my pet movies. But yeah, I was trying to figure out whether or not we did Wanted. No, 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 no. We haven't. Huh. No, I just I. I don't know that it fits. I, I think Wanted did all right. I don't know. I refuse to... I don't know. I've, I've done a lot of movies I really like that fit better onto the podcast. And I just don't feel like... Uh, I have other things I want to do with it. I feel like it's it's in that category. It's, it's, it's the type of movie... It's the same with, like, Bloodshot. Like, when we... I think that's it. kind of, like... I like it for a lot of the reasons I sort of like Bloodshot. Which um, may not make sense to anyone but me, but um, yeah, that it's like maybe someone else figure can get gets the point there. But I really like movies like that, where these uh, movies they're sort of like trying to like vaguely ape the Matrix, <laughs> which I kind of like. Also, the Matrix is. Also, probably one of my favorite movies. I need to rewatch them. I need to rewatch all the Matrix movies. I haven't done that in a little bit. Um, that's probably my next project. That's fair. Anyway, yeah. I still haven't sat down and watched a single Matrix movie, so. Right, we could do that together, maybe. Watch all the Matrix movies one day. <laughs> I, 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 I think I've watched uh, the third one, like the, the most recent one recently, because. Oh, like my whole family sat down and like watched it and i'm like do i really know enough to like sit here and be able to judge this and the answer is probably not but also probably yeah i feel like that's a hard sell as like the last matrix movie is your only matrix movie yeah that's fair yeah i feel like that's a tough especially with the themes of that it is a it is a capital S sequel, I'll say that. Although I did really enjoy it. But I'm not saying that it's a detriment, but it is like there are certain movies where like you need to where you probably need to see the last one. And I think that's one of them. The Matrix is anyway, moving on. We don't need we can't talk about the Matrix all day, Cody. <laughs> so Victor Frankenstein. Uh it opens with a terrible opening voice crawl. Uh, where um, Igor, who's the main character of this movie, uh, Daniel Radcliffe is playing Igor, uh, the iconic hunchback from the uh, Frank Frankenstein series, uh, or the Frankenstein movies, and I think book? Is he in the book? I don't know. I haven't read the book in a while. I haven't uh, read the book in a long time. Um, I don't uh, remember. I think I've read it when I was like, maybe nine or ten maybe eleven or twelve so it, it's been almost twelve sixteen years since I've read the I'm I'm probably something like that I'm probably my, for me it's yeah. probably that ballpark and, too and so so one of the the issues I had when I actually read um, like the actual Frankenstein book is I think I got like a an abridged version because like the book itself was like was like it was really tiny. It was like a tiny little square book. I got a couple of the classic tales. I've got uh, Treasure Island by uh, Lewis what's his face something or other, and then I got the uh, Frankenstein, and they were uh, like about one hundred and eighteen maybe. 200 pages long between the two of them frankenstein is written in 1818 i i keep forgetting how old that book is yeah which which they bring up a couple of like weird scientific things like when was the light bulb invented okay here's the other thing this movie takes place in the 1860s so what what that's a weird yeah. So, I, I think um, they placed it in the 1860s to, like, 
um, give them access to more technology. Because 1818 is like basically pre-railroad. Like you have rail, mm -hmm. rail uh, like trains, but they're like not recognizable as like a train. I think uh, trains really take off probably in the next decade after that, in like 1820s, um, as like a major thing. So I think that's probably why they've placed this uh, later. Yeah, it's um, I think I think, um, but you're asking about light bulbs. I can find when light bulbs are invented. Yeah, so so they were built. They were patented in in 1979. And I think they were first invented in the 1880s. So, like the the fact that they brought up the lightning, the lightning bulb, light, the light bulb. I don't know why I'm saying lightning bulb, light bulb in like uh, this movie. Which, given the timeline that you just set out, like they weren't invented for another 20 years. Uh, hold on. Th these might be gas light bulbs because they used to. Yeah. They used to run like uh, indoor lighting. Yeah, but they they were still making the whole, the whole entire lighting comparison. I need to figure out what that lighting. I don't even know what to put that under, like the natural gas lighting, gas lighting. Gas lighting is invented in uh, starts to uh, come across in London in 18, 18, 16. So yeah, it, they're probably gas light bulbs. Or gaslights. Yeah, but the, the, that's still the point that I'm trying to make is like the fact that like this is a forty million dollar budget. Nobody's gonna sit there and like fact check the fact light bulbs weren't invented before he wrote it into his script. So I don't know. Well, England would have like gas lights, but uh, I mean they work a little differently. Also, didn't. Uh... Like it came, like uh, Frankenstein came out in 1816, mm -hmm. and you're telling me that glass lighting came out in what 1816? Uh, actually, a little bit after. Though uh, the original, I think, in the novel, they just we'll have they're just like the harnessing original, the lightning bolt. Up. Oh, am I? Yeah. Everybody is like, both of them are uh, harvesting lightning. It's like the whole major point of the story. But like, there's still the illusion that uh, McAvoy makes later to the to the light uh, light bulb. I don't know. It's just a weird thing for them to even like put forward. Because I know Mary Shelley probably didn't mention the lightning or the uh, electric at that point in time. In its defense, uh, 19th century London is pretty cutting edge for technology. Like, it's like if all this fancy stuff is happening there for a reason. Back on topic, though. Uh, this movie start is um, uh, this movie starts with a voiceover from uh, Igor, the main character, is saying, "You know this story," which I don't know. I don't like these ever. So. Um, and we cut to Igor in a circus um, where he is performing as a clown. We get uh, some information on him. He's in love with a trapeze artist. Do we get to watch? Um, we get to demonstrate the film's um, anatomy effects where it shows like her bones and muscles moving with like uh, glowing lights. Which is kind of neat. When uh, we also learn that he's also the... Um, the circus's doctor, which is uh, interesting enough, because um, he's uh, Igor is really into medical textbooks, which um yeah makes sense for Igor. It makes sense what that like Igor, the famous assistant to Doctor Frankenstein, would be also a medical expert in his own right. Which yeah, that's um I think there's good room to like give Igor extra character, because I feel like he's sometimes uh, pushed to the wayside. Uh, I think in some of the Yurtiverse... No, 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 uh, early... no, no, no. This character, this character in, in Mary Shelley's Frankenstein is like a footnote. He has like one cameo throughout the whole entire show and then 
gets brutally murdered, I think, off screen. I don't even know how, like, the, uh, uh, like his, like, her first depiction of, uh, Igor, how she was described, like, in the actual book. Uh, Igor is also, uh, I think he plays a bigger role in, like, the Universal movies. I think he maybe becomes a villain in those at one point, but I think that's a lot where his iconic uh, portrayal comes from, is from those early movies, and yeah, but I, I mean, that gets into some uh, demonizing of the uh, disabled, um, that goes into some problematic tropes, which I don't, I don't know, this movie doesn't fall into those same traps, because um, Igor's uh, in this movie is a pretty uh like he's okay so let me reiterate what i was saying here there was no character named igor in the original mary shelley frankenstein he he only showed up in the bella lugosi boris karloff no just the uh son of frankenstein and the ghost of frankenstein so not even like in the original frankenstein for Oh, yeah. Maybe? I can't remember. It's been a little bit. I watched the original... Fr I lost the Universal one like two years ago. I can't remember. But yeah, in this, Igor sort of... He's sort of, like... He's very much like one of those like characters. Like, he's a scientist of his time. He does some stuff that's like... Maybe seems grotesque, but he is... Uh, um, the hero of the story, and I don't think he's a bad person within the story but yeah yeah and after we get to, uh, introduced to him uh we see some of the other uh um circus performers being mean to him uh saying like what are you doing nerd except it's in a cockney accent so he's just like oi what are you doing there nerd i don't know i can't do my english accents um during uh when they go to their next performance uh Igor is, um, who also does not have a name at this point in the movie. Uh, no one ever named uh, this character. They just called him the Hunchback, or Freak, as he says in the movie. They go a weird direction with uh, how they name Igor in this movie, but we'll get to that. The trapeze, trapeze artist Lorelai falls, and uh, they everyone calls for a doctor. Uh, one Victor Frankenstein... Uh, a medical student uh, appears from the crowd and says and sees if he can help some helps her, but he's just like, nah, I don't think you can. Um, she's got like a bone broken and it's pressing down on her lung, on her lung. Um, and after getting that diagnosis, uh, I'm just gonna call him Igor just to simplify things. Igor uh d devises a quick fix and uses um. Victor's pocket wash to like set that collarbone into place so it's no longer restricting her breathing. And at that point, they're able to proper uh, pass her along to proper medical authorities. Um. So yeah, that was a thing. Uh, Victor's very impressed with uh, Igor and uh, starts walking away. Actually, I think uh, Victor offers him a little bit of a job here, but he's just kind of like, "Ooh, well, I don't, I don't know yet." But his decision is quickly made for him as the um, ringleader of the circus starts burning all of uh, Igor's uh, medical books and uh, locks him in a cage, uh, saying that he can't leave because he belongs to the circus, which um, isn't strictly true because I uh, it's 1860 and slavery is supposed to be illegal in England, but also they have probably lots of other uh, inappropriate labor practices that are probably catching him here. Um, also, who is he going to call? Frankly. But during the night, um, uh, Victor shows up and attempts to uh, free Igor and uh, attempts to free Igor from the cage, and they flee the scene together, uh, which results in some of the circus performers uh, attacking them uh, in the scuffle. A uh, couple uh, circus men got killed, but Igor and Victor managed to flee through a storm drain. 
Igu- uh, yeah, they do some neat tricks where they like start a fire by breaking an oil lamp. Uh, they turn off a light in a ma- uh, a um, trick mirror area that gets them uh, gets a guy killed, and they trick a guy like that. It's pretty interesting. That's kind of a neat little scene. Victor takes Igor to his home and uh, says, uh, and eventually just uh, come uh, leaves Igor as, on his own for a little bit before returning with a uh, with a contraption of some sort, which alarms Igor a little bit, and he's just like, and he uh, starts. Uh, Victor starts walking toward Igor, or Igor with his big freaking. Uh, a uh, needle the size of uh, like a long hand, like it's a really big, long, scary needle. Um, Igor tries to flee, but uh, uh, Victor manages to pin him and drives the needle into uh, Igor's hunch and diagno- and says uh, to Igor that like, oh, you're actually not. Uh, like a typical hunchback you're um you have an abscess on your back and uh he uses the big needle to like drain it um at which point it takes a lot of weight off of igor's back and victor is able to uh tackle him into a wall correcting igor's spine and then uh attaching a harness to igor in order to correct his spinal issue which is yeah i don't know about um like it works for the pro- uh, the uh, purposes of the plot, but it's a little weird that they've taken this um, character and made him not fully disabled. Yeah, which 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 ultimately, like I, I think uh, I think I, I I would much rather watch a movie about like with Daniel Radcliffe, who's just like hunched over and like scurrying around on all fours rather than them being like well there's this hunchback character let's make him sexy and then give him a love triangle like <laughs> yeah and i feel like he'd maybe be up to that i don't know oh i i 100 think that daniel radcliffe would would do a movie yeah igor spends 90 percent of this movie not visibly uh uh handicapped although he does have some mobility issues um clearly like it does i think he still has some trouble uh getting up for example Mm -hmm. um when he falls down i think he does have some of that but uh he's um they've taken his ailment and like radically changed it i did look up a little bit um i don't know that this is a real scenario um hunchback ism is um Something you don't see as much anymore. Um, they created uh, surgeries for correcting it um, in the like 1909. Um, so that's another thing. Uh, they uh, the the re- part of the reason they uh, for this plot point is that um, Igor will be suspected of murder later, and uh, they're looking for a hunchback, but Igor isn't a hunchback anymore. Uh, just a man with a minor uh spinal issue and yeah the surgeries for correcting a hunchback aren't uh purely fixed until the 1909 there's some minor spinal issues which can be corrected before then but like not a full-on hunchback which uh is a term for a person with like a very severe bad spinal curvature Sometimes caused by disease, sometimes caused by birth defect, which yeah has been more more or less corrected by modern uh, uh, medicine through surgery and uh, spinal braces, like the one Igor wears throughout the movie. Yeah, that's just a little weird. I don't know if anyone's had like a big discourse about this move about this. Uh, I don't think the movie made enough uh, profit in order to be a big deal like that. Yeah, fair enough. But yeah, also it's weird that like, it's also weird that the movie's like starring Igor and isn't like called Igor. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Because I mean, they're doing, they're, they're getting a Renfield movie now, uh, now. So 
it's not that's it's sort of something that people would be sort of interested in i don't know what renfield is renfield uh he was uh he's a guy that um dracula mind controls oh that's um yeah but that once again nicholas cage i think if anybody can pull off like mm -hmm. also renfield now that i'm thinking of the character um, it, it would be Nicolas Cage. Uh, Victor says uh, for... Uh, Victor essentially gives Igor the run of his house um, that he lives in. He basically like, oh yeah, you can uh, wander around this place. I left some... I'm going to leave some clothes out for you. Um, I'm going to leave you some money so you can buy something. Also, like, you can use the shower. Um, I'll be home for supper at six and I'll feed you. So yeah, he's actually doing a pretty, uh, Igor, a pretty good solid here. Also, he just says, oh yeah, tell people you're Igor. Uh, because uh, my flatmate is Igor, is a guy named Igor Straussman. He's a big heroin addict and he's almost never here. So if anyone asks who you are, just tell them you're Igor Straussman. And that's why he's called Igor. So yeah, that's a thing. Igor takes a shower. After uh, he cleans up and puts some uh, clothes on, gets ver uh, his note, he decides to go check in on uh, Lorelai at the hospital. We cut to the circus where um, a, pol a policeman from Scotland Yard is investigating the murder. He was told by the ring circus ringleader that um, Igor and this random guy... Um, Killed the guy and cleared out the safe. But the detective's not really buying it. He's just like, I mean, look, guy, man, this guy was being treated like shit. He probably uh, broke out of this place. And the ringleader's probably making up a lie about the safe being robbed. And he's, yeah, he manages to put that together. And essentially, this random stranger just came and uh, attempted to free Igor. And yeah. But he notices something there. He notices like a bag. And uh, he uh, opens it. And then he just immediately changes his mind. Uh, this detective. What was his name again? I didn't hear it throughout the movie. Oh. We said it earlier. I just can't remember. Yeah, got it. Uh, Roderick Turpin. Uh, played by Andrew Scott. Turpin. Uh, upon gets finding this bag, opening it up, and looking inside, he changes his mind on all that and says, put out a warrant for this guy's arrest, charge him with murder, I want to find this guy. And that doesn't quite explain why. Igor makes his way to the hospital. Uh, he finds um, Lorelai in rough shape, but still alive, and uh, gives the nurse some instructions on how to properly heal her. And gives her some money to so that she can get some medicine she needs. And then he leaves. On his way back, he finds a bunch of wanted posters. Like a ludicrous amount of wanted posters. Plastered on the side of a wall. Uh, showing a picture of uh, him. Him and then uh, a drawing of Victor. Which isn't one-to-one um, -one accurate. We cut back to the police off, uh, to Officer Turpin. Or Detective Turpin, and he explains that uh, someone was stealing a bunch of body card body parts uh, from around town. Pretty common issue in the 19th century, uh, sadly enough. Um, kind of when where uh, is it? what's that? Is it? Yeah. Um. You ever see those memes about like the cages over top grave plots, and they're like, "Ooh, zombies." I, no, I. I I was always concerned that, like, it, that was, like, to, or I always just assumed that it was, uh, to prevent, uh, grave robbers. Yeah, that's what grave Which, robbers do. They, that's why they do grave robbery. I don't think they steal the body parts, though. Yeah, that, that is what they no, do the they grave steal, robbing like, for. No, they steal, like, the jewelry. They like, do both. That people are buried in, like, the suits. They don't steal body parts. They they do, <laughs> they do absolutely do that. What are they, for what? Medical exp like dumb medical experiments. So you don't need to pay for them. Okay. Yeah, Maybe. it's it's gross. Um, 
the fact that like this is like early medical stuff too just makes yeah sense. um no this is probably still an era where they're not sure vivisection is wrong i don't know what vivisection is so uh vivisection is like the dissection but the thing's alive when you do it okay so uh amputation without any like uh and a state or no um no this is like to like poke state. around and see what's going on in there oh so people are still responsive so that they can like figure out how muscles work i mean people and animals but uh yeah sort of um some drugs were sometimes used in these um procedures but uh Depended on the doctor. Um, some of them would use them. Fair some enough. of them said it uh, disrupted the uh, purpose of their experiments. And this was a thing up until like uh, in, throughout the 19th century. Um, you can actually find like uh, documents from like Charles Darwin where he argues against vivisection. But yeah, um, although at this point uh, Victor was just stealing like animal parts. But yeah, essentially, uh, this guy, uh, this uh, detective, is noticing the connection here and wants to, like, uh, he figures this mysterious stranger that helped Igor is also the guy that was uh, stealing body parts. And he figures he's doing something ungodly. And I mean that with, like, the capital G. This guy's, like, a really uh, hardcore Christian. Who's trying to uh, get to the bottom of this? Yeah, I don't know how this is. Um, they have this whole plot line where like this uh, really Christian detective is like squaring off with uh, the egg, the uh, firmly uh, atheist uh, Victor Frankenstein. I don't know about how this plot line's done. Um, I think it's certainly plausible. I don't know that uh, th this is like um, an authentic. Uh, thing that would happen but yeah that's why he uh changed his mind and wanted them pursued for murder because he wants to track this guy down at any means necessary uh igor uh victor comes home to find igor panicking uh but v uh, victor sort of tries to calm him down he points out that the picture of him doesn't look anything like him and they're also that they're looking for a hunchback and igor is no longer hunchback which is uh yeah that's pretty fair that's pretty uh good um call uh like like maybe it's not out of the question for someone to develop a experimental uh treatment for a hunchback um at this point in time but um i don't think the recovery is uh like likely to happen nearly as quickly i think that probably comes with some bed rest in most cases and yeah Vic victor is some sort of super scientist so so Vic, uh, Victor and Igor come to an arrangement. Victor's going to help Igor become more of a uh, proper member of society, learn the uh, ways of uh, high society, he teaches them to use like uh, uh, utensils properly and napkins. He's also, uh, and the reason he's doing this is because Igor is a uh, talented surgeon um, based on what uh, Victor saw. And uh, he wants, uh, Victor wants Igor's help in um, doing some uh, medical experiments, uh, which uh, he's just not a, a good enough uh, pure surgery person to do. Uh, Igor gets some help, uh, agrees to help him with that. And in exchange, Victor's just like, yeah, you can have the run of this place except for the basement, which is a um, pretty decent deal. Uh, Igor, in the meantime, uh, sends money to pay for uh, Lorelai's recovery, but doesn't see her because he doesn't want to like get the cops' attention on her. There's a brief bit where they get a letter from the real Igor. Nothing really happens to that for now. Th after they do some stuff, and we see some montage of Igor doing some uh, surgery or like a uh, dissection. They, uh, the two of them go to a party to go celebrate. Uh, Victor says, hey, uh, just don't do anything to embarrass me. But ironically, Victor's a way worse party guest. 
Uh, he is very rude to people. He's um, having like really gross discussions about like uh, anatomy and like uh, really semi-ethical doctor stuff, which um, I mean, it's 19th century, so there's not really an ethics board. Um, I don't know. Uh, hold on, I can Google the Hippocratic Oath, see when it was invented. There is a hundred percent an ethics board, like maybe not an ethics board, but the the board of the college that Victor Frankenstein works at is ironically trying to kick him out for not keeping up with his schoolwork because he's so devoted to this other side project. But this other side project that he's doing should a hundred percent definitely disqualify him from this school board. Well, um, he he's a medical student. He's not an actual doctor yet. That's part of the issue. Oh, then like hundred and ten percent. Yeah, should like not even be like stripping him of his license at that point. But yeah, no, he he almost certainly doesn't know. have. A it's also license. like the. the, the the 1800s so i feel like I, I feel like the the term medical license is kind of like a misnomer yeah probably uh 1847 is when the first uh medical ethic code and wasn't uh introduced in, in uh england or in the uk so it's not off the table but Fair um enough. so like year also um these guys uh, are like, uh, there's still like lots of uh, like unethical medical experiments that just happen anyway. There's some uh, it's really like that. yeah. Go ahead. Like what's it, what's stopping? And like, like maybe in uh, London where everything's a little bit more more established, but like. How I mean, I guess some schools would have been set up by the time, like this time in the Americas, but like I don't know. I just feel like a lot of the times people are just like, I'm gonna become a, a lawyer now. I think Jefferson himself uh, was mostly self taught, like Thomas Jefferson, and then he did some schooling at like, uh, I just feel like a lot of people could just be like, I'm a lawyer now, and then they're a lawyer in like the olden times. Like there, there's nothing stopping them from just like setting up like a law office and pretending to be a lawyer. Uh, I was watching a. Uh, I was gonna I was, call you up. Yeah, I was listening to an episode of the Well, There's Your Problem podcast, and they had a guy build a uh, design a dam who was a self-taught engineer. So okay. yeah, did it work? Uh, for a little while. Like, I, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess that's the kind of like the purpose of a dam is it works until it doesn't, and then. Yeah, this was in California, but yeah, as for like medical ethics, um, I mean, you always find some people that did it uh, that do unethical things despite the Hippocratic Oath, usually to marginalized peoples, mm -hmm. and you could also probably uh, attach like. Also to animals. Is all, these things happen. Animals. Yeah. Convicted uh, felons. Yep. Uh, yeah, I would uh, include them under marginalized peoples for this purpose. Um, Women. Yeah. Yeah. Native Americans, African Americans. Yeah, there's yeah. some really nasty things you can find if you look hard enough. I mean, like, obviously, that like we uh, we've already seen that like Igor would follow, uh, be classified as a marginalized community because he's already currently traveling around in a circus, and, and and I mean, if he wasn't, I don't know what his life would be like outside of, uh, even though like he's apparently a doctor. Oh, right. Uh, sorry, folks. We uh, had a little bit of technical difficulties. Uh, it is um, a later recording date. It is uh, four days later, about halfway through, something like that. So sorry if we mess up here. Uh, but um, I think where we left off was Igor up to like uh, get recruit Igor into like as become his like a uh, lab assistant or lab partner, whatever. And uh, Victor and 
uh, brings Igor up to his goal and confesses that his goal is essentially to bring back the dead, which was, uh, a th which was, yeah, more or less. He, and yeah, that's going to be a result of him uh, trying to bring life. And he figures that like, Hey, I can probably do this by like zapping a uh, dead body. And he does so by demonstrating with a, uh, pair of uh human eyes he has in like some sort of gelatin thing which he electrocutes and the eyes start following a uh lighter that he moves around or a match so that's uh, sort of proving that this sort of kind of works but victor is not enough of a talented enough surgeon to do it properly so there's a bit of, so um the eyes are moving a little bit slower than they should be uh igor is a more talented uh surgeon with his hands uh, better with his hands so he's going to be the one responsible for deattaching body parts and put and put, giving them to victor so that he can put them together and yeah and in return which in hindsight uh this was kind of like really ahead of its time at this point in time but i, I don't think uh electricity used for defibrillation to uh restart organs or i guess at least the heart was wasn't used until the early 1930s and became more common yeah. practice around the 70s if i am correct i could be wrong but like there's some earlier stuff where you can sort of like uh get a dead body to move if you zap it a bit but i don't know that that's of uh, mary shelley's time for sure or like ethical but yeah, but um, I mean, yeah, I guess once you donate your body to science, they can kind of just do whatever. I don't think there's like a whole lot of oversight on like, yeah, yeah, not as much as you'd like. At least not, not, not as much as you'd like in the early 1800s. They were probably doing some pretty messed up. <laughs> but yeah, I think we went over that. Um. Yeah, Igor's going to use uh, his um, money he's getting from uh, Victor in order to, like, pay for uh, Lorelai's recovery. They briefly get a letter from uh, the real Igor, or a letter for the real Igor, I should say. But uh, Victor gets him to, like, uh, ignore it and uh, just be like, uh, hey, um no time for that uh we gotta go to a party and celebrate um and says hey uh yeah we're gonna go to this fancy party uh don't embarrass me uh ironically enough victor is far worse at the party uh Igor's way more polite yeah so they show up and uh victor is um being rude and explaining to a bunch of women uh weird medical theory which isn't a great table conversation um, and he's really shouty about it. And uh, after a while of like uh, Igor, like nervously um, trying to get him to back off, uh, Igor sees um, a lady he recognizes from the other side of the room and goes to find her. Turns out that's Lorelai. After she had recovered, she got um, picked up by this one guy who uh, is essentially using her as his beard. Because he's a gay man, and she's uh, meant to, like, help him keep up appearances. But yeah, um, Lorelai and uh, Victor, uh, uh, Igor bond for a little bit. They, uh, Victor eventually shows up and says, hey, you're the fallen angel. And then uh, they end up leaving um, the party after that. And uh, Lorelai and Igor uh, start to resume a little relationship thing, which is kind of nice. And at this point, uh, Victor reveals what his, uh, why they're celebrating is that, uh, Victor has managed to, uh, get his experiments to sort of work and, uh, shows Igor, um, the creation they've made together. And it's a, uh, ta like a patchwork, ch uh, Frankenstein's monster chimp they're calling Gordon, who's, uh, very monstrous looking. Uh, there's a bunch of, like, exposed skin. It's kind of a brutal-looking effect, actually. I kind of... It's kind of good. I like it. Could make you a bit squeamish, but, yeah, that's kind of the goal here. 
and they demonstrate that it works when they give it a shock and the um the monster starts breathing a bit uh but it only holds charge for like half an hour but it is a proof of concept i think you can sort of kind of do something like this i think you can make things move i don't know that you can specifically get the entire organism to start uh living for a bit but um yeah you can sort of make dead bodies do things with electricity and at this igor kind of buys in to what they're doing and it's just like hey we could maybe make this work and the next day they've scheduled a presentation to demonstrate what they can do victor does a bit of a speech to uh, a crowd of seven people um including lorelei who igor invited but there's only like uh seven people that show up to see his experiments Victor tries a jolt after giving a very clumsy speech. He's not a great uh, public speaker. He does a jolt. It doesn't work. It sprays a bunch of uh, bugs out of uh, Gordon's uh, like body, which, uh, yeah, that's actually a good point. I don't know that the body preservation is the best in this scenario. I don't know how good they are at that. Uh, so it doesn't work. So they end up uh, bringing the charge up. It doesn't work again. Um, a bunch of the people start to leave and, uh, in the last moment they absolutely max out the charge and, uh, the monkey starts breathing, which, uh, garners the attention of, uh, what's the guy's name? Finnegan? Finnegan sounds right. It might be Finnegan. Yep. It might be but, Finnegan. Um, I, mean, I think I'm splitting here at that point, point in time. Yeah. Uh... Yep, Finnegan. I know it's something. But yeah, Finnegan's a big nobleman uh, who uh, is uh, doing business stuff as a big uh, aristocrat in London. Uh, Finnegan was mocking Victor throughout the presentation, but uh, is for that reason, to continue mocking him as one of the last people in the room as um, Gordon starts coming to life. Uh, Gordon starts uh, breathing, and then gets up and then breaks his restraints and wander and runs throughout the uh runs out of the university and victor sends igor to go chase him um after victor is electrocuted yeah in come. all actual fairness uh i was actually kind of curious about this the other day on why humans like we as a species haven't tried to harness uh lightning as an energy source and like apparently we have and uh the whole reason why we don't do it is because electricity like lightning comes at such a high velocity that it just blow out any form of like generators that we currently have uh yeah especially i think especially like early on it would blow out anything you had um i you could maybe do it now but at this point like why would you except for curiosity because like you can just make power easier than that through like a turbine or whatever yeah yeah um maybe i just like to look at explosions yeah yeah you could probably sort of do it nowadays um but but yeah but i mean in all fairness to the amount of people who have actually been struck by lightnings and like have survived it is kind of an interesting uh, phenomenon phenomenon that word always fucks me um but anyways like yeah, the fact that, like, electricity at that, like, high voltage or the, the amount of speed doesn't actually just, like, stop somebody's heart is kind of insane, but... Yeah, you think it's, like, a death sentence, but, like, a lot, some guys do survive it. And it's... I don't imagine it's pleasant, but, I mean, uh, no, still. I mean, it's probably a lot of people that don't, too, so, I mean, I guess it's all just chance at that point in time. But also, like, the chances of being struck by lightning is pretty high, too, so, like, our numbers might be fairly skewed on the amount of times that happens and the amount of times that, like, the fatality rate of all of it, I guess, so. So Igor has to go, uh, chase, uh, chase down the chimp? He manages to, uh, he has a little bit of a messy little chase with it he gets a cord that produces electricity and uses it like an electric whip like a lion tamer and uh gets it to chase after him eventually the two of them are forced off a stairwell 
um, and Victor tries to uh, save them. Uh, he tries to save the chimp at first, but uh, is bitten by the chimp, so he saves Igor, which is concerning. Uh, fortunate, unfortunately, though, uh, the chimp is uh, pretty good at climbing, so it climbs over the shaft without, uh, climbs over the ledge without shell, uh, without help, and uh, starts chasing after him. And uh, Victor is forced to put down Gordon, although it's pointed out later. Um, we I don't know if this is well portrayed in the movie, but uh, it's pointed out that uh, Gordon was having trouble breathing toward the end. Uh, he might not have even lasted too much longer on his own. But yeah, they managed to kill Gordon with a fire extinguisher. So they're pretty uh, bummed out about it. They feel pretty rejected, dejected. But uh, Finnegan is, um, he's impressed. He offers an apology because, yeah, the thing went crazy, but it worked. And frankly, like, the thing was a wild animal anyway. If you had like just introduced the, ch if you had just introduced like a regular chimp in that same scenario, they might have been uh, done the same thing. So it's not necessarily a disproving of the uh, procedure. It just means uh, that a wild animal got set loose in a in, a, in the middle of a university. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty good uh, demonstration of uh, concept, proof of concept. So they get some funding. Sure. Uh, Victor, uh, says that, um, they want to go up or, uh, do some more. And, uh, he says he's going to create a man, which, yeah, by that same logic I just put out, that might be the better way to go. Um, a man's going to be more intelligent, um, and would be less likely to, uh, turn on you. Yeah. If that was raising, if what I just said raised red flags for you, um, I also believe that, uh, theme park full of dinosaurs isn't actually that dangerous so <laughs> i am in many ways the sucker that, that is a lot to unpack. yeah no um there's a reason i don't have a science degree is because i'm absolutely <laughs> the guy who gets like uh hung by his own batard in these sort of stories you're uh the old professor at the, the from jurassic park i can't remember his name it's not david hammond? suzuki though i know that much yeah is it hammond yeah. Yeah, I think it's I don't know. Yeah, I haven't seen the movies uh, other than the new ones, and I don't really like them. I mean, I, I don't think you're missing a whole lot. I think the first one's the good one. Or maybe you are. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think there's only like one. Yeah, really only one good one. Like, I like Chris Pratt, but, um, but I really only like Chris Pratt as uh, Star-Lord. Like, I, I haven't watched Parks and Rec, and... Uh, I don't know. Jurassic Park, I think it kind of boils down to like, there's not enough feathers on the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park to really like. <laughs> it's weird they haven't like decided to make that just the fact of the matter. Just make the dinosaurs feathered in the new movies. Just pretend the old ones were. Well, uh, even if they were the like. Time. Yeah, but like, even if they, if they were like. Like, they brought dinosaurs back, and in one scene, they're like, oh, these dinosaurs have feathers on them. Who would have thought this? Like, I, I would have been, like, so, like, thrilled that they're at least, like, trying to bring in, like, some form of, like, scientific fact to the matter of, like, there, there's a good possibility that dinosaurs have feathers. Um, I don't know. Maybe they did in the new Jurassic Park. I haven't seen it, so I once think again, there was one with feathers. Yeah, but, like, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and you'd think with, like, a 10-year-old a kid that, like, who's in love with dinosaurs currently and has been for, like, three years that I would have sat down and watched uh, Jurassic Park at, the, at least once. But No, um, I mean, some of that's accounting for, like, uh, what they made at the time. Uh, I don't know that they have that same excuse now. But, uh, yeah, I... And on to the Chris Pratt thing, I think, like, is he ever the most likable guy? I think in, like, Guardians, it's even, like, noted that, like, Star-Lord's kind of not the best guy. So you're kind of like, yeah, it's intentional. But, like, he keeps that in, like, his other roles. So I don't know if you can, yeah. Is Chris Pratt really all that likable? <laughs> Let's be honest. I don't know. 
I think he just has a face. Like a face that you're like, this guy is, seems too dim-witted to be like trying to like pull one over my eyes or something. Like he's almost too likable to the point that like even when he's not likable, you're like, uh, we'll give him a pass this one time. So <laughs> I don't know. If he turns out to be like a like super villain then Yeah, I think um I don't know, real life he maybe he's like in like a bad church, but I mean Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. He's not in this movie. Uh <laughs> so Victor and Igor have a bit of an argument about this. This um incident also brings uh the police officer on their trail and uh he shows up at the uh at Victor's place and um they have a bit of a conversation and uh Turpin uh sort of uh gets uh tries to taunt him into admitting some uh guilt. Although here's like the problem with Turpin is uh he's a little light on actual crimes here because like he doesn't have proof they were at the original thing from the beginning really just incidental stuff and him creating uh, a so-called abomination against god isn't um well it is 18 18 18 uh, or 1867 it might still be a yeah crime, i think that would actually like oh yeah 100 yeah. percent. I, I think it was like even more so back then that, that like the problem with like Turpin is he's not he's a fanatic, but like the whole world is filled with fanatics at this point in time. So like any judge, jury, executioner, like is automatically by default just gonna be on Turpin's side. So Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of the contrast here is like um Turpin's maybe overreaching a little bit, but also Frankenstein is a bad scientist. So you're kind of weighing your options mm -hmm. here. And Victor gets I a mean, bit of like there is shoddy police mid work in the, the like two thousands. Like I'd really, really dislike to see what police work like looked like back then, considering like a lot of the stuff that we consider like good detective work is now coming out as like defunct. And there's been a lot of people in the prison system being set free years after the fact that they were proven innocent. So, I mean, like, anybody who's just, like, kind of generally shifty back then, they'd probably lock up without... And I don't think the legal system back in the day was good enough to, like, warrant, like, oh, I've got this really decent lawyer that's gonna possibly get me off here. Like, I feel like it's just, like... Which is really funny to me because, as you you said earlier, he is trying to get him to admit to something. But like, even like nowadays, it'd just be like, "Oh, that's what he said." As I said, but that's not what I said at all. Like, it's just he said, she said at that point in time. Yeah. And even at that, they're still gonna like weigh the inspector's words heavily, more so over this criminal. And there's no way to really like, like prove. That's the fact anymore because, like, anybody in the situation is always going to be biased towards one party or the other. Um, rather biased towards Frankenstein in, like, Igor's case, if he was here during the conversation, or if it was another police officer, it'd be more biased towards uh, Turpin's case. So, I mean, there's like one thing I got to say is, like, we, yeah, we may live in a surveillance state, but at this point in time, maybe that surveillance state is one day going to save your life. So, it, yeah, it, like really at the end of the day here, all Turpin would have on Frankenstein is a uh, a charge of a um, manslaughter and self-defense and stealing a dead lion's paw. Yeah, mm -hmm. he doesn't have much here. And what happened at the well, university? I mean, I guess the, like if I remember correctly, like gross mutilation of a corpse would technically might be a charge but it's also an animal so yeah people an kind of get yeah. weird about that where they're like well animals aren't human so i mean it's his animal he can do what he likes with it type ordeal um but i don't know yeah like i mean he did this is all just it. hearsay i don't have a law degree <laughs> yeah um especially like if you did you'd have like a law degree on today's laws not like 
19 late 19th century laws uh that like predate the dominion yeah, no. Canada. so so yeah and it, yeah at that point in time it'd be like british law wouldn't even be yeah. canadian law yeah so, so um anyway so eventually this this results in nothing other than like turpin being suspicious and uh frankenstein uh being uh feeling like a bit of a dope turpin says he'll be back with a uh, back with a warrant which again they're talking to him because of the thing at the university where there wasn't really a crime so i i i don't know i feel like if i today were to go outside and like hook a dead monkey up to like a car battery i i, I feel like somebody would be <laughs> super upset with me at that point in time i'm not saying it, it, it it's not a crime back in the days i'm saying it probably should be yeah like, somebody should rein this person in but like who who's the law to say that you can't <laughs> especially really early on and i mean like victor Victor's defense here is he's like, I'm a doctor. This is doctor stuff. This makes sense in my mind. So, yeah, no, he was performing medical research, which he's allowed to do um, as a medical student. But anyway, moving on. Lorelai tells him not to be bullied um, because she's, uh, Igor's have, or tells Igor not to be bullied because Igor is having some uh, doubts about this whole thing. In the meantime, uh, but uh, Igor goes back and they start having a, uh, they start doing some uh, brainstorming on uh, how to make the new monster. When uh, Baron Frankenstein arrives, and uh, this is the really scene where like it's really egregious that these people aren't German, because like, yeah, actually, like, Charles Dance just like. His ability to play a disappointed father, like, should just get him cast as, like, every single disappointed father out there at this point in time. Because the only thing I really know this guy from uh, prior to uh, this, and I think a couple of movies that came out after uh, Game of Thrones. That's all he seems to ever play is, like, a <laughs> angry, doting father of, like, uh, geniuses? <laughs> I don't know. I like Tyrion. I don't like this guy, though. <laughs> no, he does a damn good job um, in this movie. Mm -hmm. um, it's just that, like, these characters yeah. are... Aren't these characters the, supposed like, to be German? But then again... Like, uh, one and yeah. a half of, like... Okay, what is Baron in terms of royalty? Uh, just refresh my memory here. It's It's lower on the... Come on, you're the one with the history degree here. I don't. Yeah, I don't. Don't. It's. It's beneath. Duke. Well, I don't even know what a duke is anymore. Like, isn't it just basically like a ward of a certain area? Yeah, that's I think... like loyal no. to the king, but like still a lord in their own right. Okay, Duke's the highest. It's uh, Duke's the highest. Below it is Marquis. Below that is Earl. Below that is Viscount. And below that is Baron. So it's like the bottom of the barrel of yeah. lords. It's the lowest level of like proper monarch and or proper noble in uh, England. Um, I don't know about Germany, though. I, I imagine it's sort of simple, but... Um, so it goes king or queen, prince, princess, duke, duchess, marquess, marchioness, earl, countess. Yeah, barons. Uh, so, so what you're telling me is like. Yeah. Barons also below in Germany. Like, Count <laughs> Dracula would actually just be like an earl Dracula. Yeah. Um, yeah, something like that. <laughs> Count is above Baron. <laughs> Sounds a little less. Mm -hmm. By almost like one. 
a count would be like a step or two above Baron, depending on where you are. So Baron would probably report to a count. Yeah, that's just confusing. Um, it's all dumb. It's all very dumb. And I guess the like count kind of has that same like, uh, like Dracula definitely ruined it for everybody who was a count before him because like every time I hear the word count Dracula, um, I just or the term count i just instantly think of uh count dracula and i think the red baron kind of de definitely like destroyed the the term of uh baron towards me too so i don't when was the last know. time Whenever you heard I about a nice in front baron. of somebody's name i just assume that they're that, they're like they're massive douchebags <laughs> and i mean like charles dance gets that across fairly, fairly fairly well here at this point so <laughs> yeah like i challenge you to show up like one good example of like a nice baron you can't do it i, I think anybody who's like honestly like a noble at this point in time is is gonna be always a little bit out of touch with reality considering it's like well i was born into this family and we've been mm -hmm. Like lords of this place for the last 150 years, and I'm like, well, lucky for you. Yeah, what are you? What are you gonna argue with me against? Like the guy who made Downton Abbey. Fuck off! Just. I mean, I guess like the only way like to ever achieve any semblance of like royalty at this point in time is to be like super distinguished within a certain field, and like. We as Canadians can have that done, like we, because we're still part of the the uh, uh, monarchy technically. So there's the Royal Order of Canada, and we could still be technically knighted, but which I think, uh, so, I think, or right, a general would have to knight you. I think I don't know how that would work. Uh, Governor General or or the Queen themselves. I think the Queen used to do it. Um, they would yeah. fly people in to receive the Order of Canada. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know who I, has an Order of Canada. There's probably quite a an extensive list of yeah. people who've been gotten there. I don't know many Canadian knights who aren't prime ministers. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like. I don't like I I don't know if that's an exclusive privilege to them. They sort of stopped doing that in like the 30s. I think uh Borden might have been the last one or like the guy after Borden. So some sometime in the 20s they stopped doing it, I think. And I think it boils down back to like honestly <laughs> I'm trying to like find my way to make this like applicable that like because of, like so many people who are born into privilege just have the luxury of being able to do what they want. Like this guy becoming a doctor in the eighteen hundreds, like because oh, yeah. he came from royalty, is uh, probably I don't know. <laughs> Maybe yeah, I'm no. reaching. Maybe this is just my like <sighs> once a week anti monarch rant. But <laughs> yeah, no, you're not wrong. Like at this point, um. I mean, at, at this point, it's getting a little better, but it's probably, like, you put this in, like, 1818, and, like, like w the year Frankenstein, the book, was written, uh, doctors are, like, probably, like, 70%, like, eighth son of nobles who are, like, they can't inherit, they can't inherit any actual wealth uh, or any actual position, so they need to get, like, a real job, but um, their parents will pay for their schooling, so they'll get, like, a good job. Um, like a doctor or something. Well, even if you take a look at uh, Mary Shelley, mm -hmm. uh, her, her white her, her husband was uh, I'm pretty sure not no, uh, royalty, if I'm yeah, not mistaken. Be. Yeah, yeah, Mary very well. Um, anyway, oh, yep. uh, uh, Sir Percy Florence Shelley, the third baronet. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, that's his child. I think a baronet is like a prince to a baron. Mm-hmm. 
It's like the equivalent. Anyway. So, yeah. Um, uh, Baron Frankenstein has a very stern talking to about his hus- uh, about his uh, son who uh, got uh, the Baron got a letter saying that uh, uh, Victor hasn't been doing his studies and they're thinking of expelling him unless he had unless he like begs the board for of the of the school for forgiveness uh but yeah and he's just expressing his disappointment and he's saying he should be more like henry uh which is later revealed to be uh igor's uh or not igor uh victor's uh older brother who died uh in their childhood after this conversation uh igor uh um, goes in to sort of comfort Victor and they start to uh, um, chat uh, like they come to a realization that in order for the um, the man to work he's going to need uh, they need to go bigger because uh, in order to like charge this person with electricity they need to be able to take the electricity so that means the person needs to be bigger. So their plan is essentially to like double up this thing's organs as well so that it can like maintain the electrical signal. Um, and they're going to double up all the vitals, the hearts and the lungs. And then they do pull an all nighter, uh, nailing out uh, the flaw, uh, nailing out the design uh, over some whiskey. Yeah, it's kind of a neat little thing. And they draw it on the floor. It's really neat. Did they give them double brains? I don't know that double brains was something they said. Okay, well, they they brought up, like, they're like, we're going to give him two hearts, and then, like, they're sitting there talking, and he's like, yeah, I also want him to have a flat skull. And yeah, I'm, it's sort of a joke as a reference to like, the original. Igor was movie. like, but why? And he's like, and he was like, well, because... I don't know, I think it looks cool. And <laughs> that's, like, the whole extent of the conversation. I, I thought they were going somewhere with it, and then they just kind of, like, dropped it, but I don't know. Yeah, um, I yeah, th- I think there's actually, like, a sticking point with uh, Universal, where if you make a, uh, you can make a Frankenstein movie if you don't belong to Universal, but you can't, like, uh, make the monster look similar to theirs. Like, you can't make it look like it's from the, But this uh, was Lionsgate, right? Yeah. I thought we brought this up here earlier. Yeah, yeah it was. It was um, Gate, not, but yeah, that's uh, that's my point. Um, ended up doing this, so yeah, uh, they can't actually give it a flat skull because then uh, Universal would jump up their ass. Uh, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, this was a issue with um, the Hammer Frankenstein movies, um, where like the Universal guys said, "Okay, you can't um, make." your frankenstein monster look at all at all like our frankenstein monster or we'll uh we'll sue you for copyright which yeah whatever while they're uh making up the new body the cop gets told he can't really uh he can't get a warrant so that's a thing uh igor goes on a date uh, a date with lorelei but uh when he comes back from his date uh, Turpin has begun a raid on the Frankenstein residence. Igor manages to sneak in and starts uh, helping Frankenstein uh, essentially set the place for self-destruct, sort of, so that, that people can't, like, steal his research. Igor, in the process of this, finds the real Igor, who's suspended in some of uh, Frankenstein's jelly and is um dead. And Igor and uh, Victor's just like, okay, I can explain. Or not really. He's just like, oh, don't worry about it. I I didn't kill him. He just died of his own volition. He had like a heroin app overdose. So, yeah, that's where the real Igor went. So they have a little bit of an argument about this. Uh, And while this happens, the uh, Turpin breaks into the building. He pulls a gun on Victor and uh, Victor eventually manages to uh, distract Turpin for a moment and uh, sends Turpin into a set of uh, giant steampunk gears, which um, traps uh, 
Turpin in there, allowing Igor and Victor to escape. Um, they go to Fittingen, uh, who agree, who says that he'll uh, set them up in a uh, his um, castle up in Scotland, uh, so they can finish their uh, their experiments. Uh, Igor, however, is saying he's out, and uh, he stays behind as Igor as uh, Victor gets sent to uh, Scotland. However, Finnegan decides he knows too much and uh, decides to uh, tie up Igor and throw him over a uh, ledge, uh, over a bridge, to seemingly kill him. But fortunately, uh, Igor is an escape artist from his time in the circus uh, and is able to uh, escape from the his uh, restraints and swim up to the surface with some damage. Uh, to his brace and manages to uh, go find Lorelai, who um, nurses him back to health. Turpin, in the meantime, is getting uh, discharged from the force because he did that entire giant raid over no with no warrant, uh, which is a bit of a problem when you're a taking down a rich guy um, and also not accomplishing much, really. Yeah, so it's one of those things that I think also boils down to, like, power dynamics at this point in time. If it was anything else over, like, if Turpin had, like, Frankenstein wasn't royalty and he was, like, doing these experiments and they ended up catching him, then he'd probably be touted as, like, a hero. But because it's uh, uh, royalty, he's eventually going to... uh get out of there without it like potentially even getting a warrant like he i think if the the judge was like oh you're investigating some random guy on the street okay here's your warrant but because it's royalty they might not even give him a warrant but also it just kind of really boils down to like really like loose ends but also i feel like justification for a warrant in the 1800s has got to be very slim mm -hmm. I don't even know if warrants were a thing. I think they were a thing. But uh, more importantly, like, this isn't, like, I think a big part of the problem is that, like, Turpin didn't want to wait, it seems like. Because um, this doesn't seem, like, it's not like Victor's, like, killing people off the street. Like, he's not a clear and present danger to society. This can, like, uh, this could probably, like, sit in the courts for a while. That might have just been the issue when Turpin got impatient. But yeah, in, in the police force says they'll still capture him, but he's not a high priority. Igor, um, in the escape, had also recovered Victor's pocket watch, which has uh, which has an inscription on the inside, which reads uh, for Henry, or it reads Henry Frankenstein. Um, and that's where he gets the whole story about how, or gets the uh, understanding of that uh, Victor had... Uh, Victor and uh, Henry had been out uh, at one point and Henry had died be uh, because of Victor and Victor's doing all this because he feels guilty. In the meantime, uh, Igor has decided he's going to go talk some sense into Victor. So he's going to go sneak up to Scotland and go find him because he knows where they're going. So um, he shows up just in time for... Uh, Finnegan and Victor to uh, begin the experiment and start this uh, new human person up to life. Uh, they attract lightning by sending some balloons up to the sky, which are going to receive the electricity. So, yeah, also uh, Turpin shows up and is going to try to uh, put a stop to this whole experiment. But Igor has gone in ahead of him and tries to talk some sense into Victor and Victor explains that um, Igor is partially right. Igor says that this experiment isn't going to bring his brother back. But Victor's just like, look, I know I can't bring my brother back. But uh, this is in about, but you see, here's the problem. I took something from the world and I need to give something back. Um, which is his main motivation here. Which... I don't know, man. Seems like he just could have just had a baby. I think that does the same thing, does it not? Yeah, I, I honestly, I actually thought of this at this point in time. Like, 
why not just honor your brother's memory by naming you like your firstborn after him or something? But he's like, I'm gonna experiment on dead corpses until we eventually get one right and bring it back to life. So I don't know. Maybe Victor's ace or something. I don't know. He doesn't. He's not into that. I don't know. It's not an um, unheard of thing for royalty to just like not want to have a baby. Yeah, for like an entire group of people whose like entire way of life revolves around them having babies, they sure don't like having them. I was even starting to think like maybe like uh uh well because he's like a genius, it might be some form of like Asperger's, and the fact that he his like ability to be socially competent was also shown earlier it could be. So. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. No, he's a dramatic bitch, so he's going to uh, create a uh, human being from nothing. So that's his that's his goal. He can't do the simple thing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what else to add. Yeah. Which <laughs> uh, yeah, sums no, it up. Makes for good movies, honestly. Um like I I you gotta come for movies for uh uh, like, what do you come to the movies for, if not, if not to see some uh, dramatic bitch do some uh, dramatic bitch shit? It's definitely jumping through, like, hoops to try and justify it, but... So Victor uh, leaves uh, Igor behind and goes to st uh, start his experiment. Um, it um, The lightning overloads some of his uh, generators or whatever, and uh, some stuff explodes. But it worked, and the creature has uh, escaped from its little harness that they had it suspended in midair from. At this point, um, uh, Turpin shows up, and uh, he pontificates about how Victor won't be able to do this again, how he's uh, not going to succeed. And eventually, when the monster uh, shows up, he fires a few rounds into it before being knocked off the uh, side of the wall. Um, also in the explosions, uh, that destroyed Finnegan's platform, and he falls to his death. Presumably. So, uh, this is where... Yeah, it was, a, it was a, definitely, like, a really big monster ex machina at this point in time, like, yeah. where they're like, we need to write our way out of this kind of shitty script, how do we do that? And they're like, okay, well, like, the two main protagonists we have built up to this point are just going to be killed by what would eventually become the the main antagonist of this story unless you're looking at it from like purely like a hypothetical situation where you could argue that like victor's pursuit of like creating a monster is his own like protagonist of the story if you want to get really <laughs> uh like deep into the the uh drive here but that's all completely debatable so like it just three for one itself at this point in time yeah uh the movie starts going downhill pretty quickly in a little bit for me uh like i said at the beginning i like the movie but i really don't like the ending yeah i can see why yeah um because like i like a lot of the vibes of this like a lot of the vibes here, I kind of like mm -hmm. what they're doing. Oh, it's like a immersion in this uh, weird steampunk universe. And uh, you get to have some fun. You get to play with a bunch of weird medical science, uh, pseudoscience. It's fun. And it's like, oh, yeah, this whole thing's building up to uh, like, OK, this is the start. Uh, this is um, the end of this movie is the beginning of uh, Franken of the book Frankenstein. Or the movie Frankenstein, whatever you want to be uh, be in, but uh, Victor walks up to uh, uh, the monster who he calls Henry a couple times, and it's just like, "Oh no, you're not, um, you're not uh, what I created. This isn't life." Um, seemingly out of nowhere, but that's not a um, unwarranted criticism of the book either, which is why you think that, like, oh, okay, this is still in line with what happens in the book. Um, like in the book, Victor also does this thing where he's just like, he creates the thing and then is like sort of horrified by it. So you still think this is going to be like the beginning of the Frankenstein movie, but um, nope, after this, oh, it's Gore and... It itself sets, a, sets it up in the beginning. Yeah, 
Yeah, like it, so. uh, in the beginning of the movie, what's his face? Uh, Daniel Radcliffe's going on like a quick monologue during like the opening couple of scenes where he's like, "Oh, you know the story," and then he pauses and like goes on to say like, "This is the beginning of the story" or something like that, and then the completely shits the bed. And by the end of it, you're like, the, "You got too." <laughs> Heavy with the creative license there a little bit. Yeah, so afterwards, uh, Igor and Victor team up to kill the monster. And they kill the monster by shoving some pipes through its chest. Uh, Igor is knocked unconscious during the fight um, after stabbing one of the hearts. And uh, he wakes up uh, in the morning when Lorelai comes to get him. And uh, that's pretty well the end of the movie. Victor says... Uh, oh, he sends uh, Igor a letter or a note saying like, hey, um, yeah, that didn't work out. Um, I think there's some issues with the brain. Um, I'll call you, man. Uh, and we'll do this again someday. <laughs> uh, which, uh, this could, like, this could have just been the beginning of the Frankenstein movie and then I would have set up a sequel. Because I think that, that would have been sort of interesting. Hey, I don't uh, like, no. Yeah. <laughs> Nope, I don't like that much. Um, and they're so close to having sort of the ending I kind of want, with like the with like um, the monster escaping, and like just the the next movie is just like mm -hmm. uh, the book, but like from a slightly different perspective, and just like the the stuff in the movie, but following uh, Daniel Radcliffe's Igor. So, I, I but yeah, think, nope. Uh... If I were to argue any point at this point in time is, like, I feel like if Universal is so litigious, like, we'll see you for using the uh, Frankenstein's monster-like image, then they would feel really, like, maybe they didn't have the rights to the Frankenstein monster. They had the rights to Igor and, like, the the story behind him and they are just like trying to avoid getting sued and like really I don't know. Um, pushing it. But I once again, I don't think so. I don't have answers. I for don't you. think that's the case. Fair enough. But, um, yeah, I'm going to just see if I can't find anything more on that. But, um, cause, cause especially with like, this is 2015. Um, and they've been talking about trying to reboot them of the, uh, the universal. I can say that much. Is it public domain? Yeah, okay. I'm almost certain it is. Yeah, I've got nothing. Yeah. Um, just really shit the bed there, I guess. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, The reason Universal might sue you if, is if you, like, ape their imagery. So if you make the monster look like mm -hmm. the monster in the Universal movies, uh, that might get you in trouble. But, um, which do they actually really notoriously own the image of Frankenstein at that point in time? Considering, like, um, there's got to be like cover art and like books prior to that, but I guess maybe they don't have like the author or the illustrators wouldn't have copyrights, and even if they did, it probably expired by the time uh, Universal decided to pick up the uh, I don't like, I don't know how serious a legal issue this actually is. All I know is there was some uh, conflict mm -hmm. between, um, I think you can maybe sort of argue that like you're, that like you can use if, like if you did certain things with the image of Frankenstein's monster, you'd be um, eating some of Universal's lunch. But um, I don't know how like legally val valid that is. I don't think any of this went to court. Um, and I think they did get softer on it. Um, some of the later horror uh, hammer Frankenstein movies do feature a Frankenstein's monster that looks a lot like the universal version. So it might just be that they've calmed down. And this was just a thing that like was a big deal when uh hammer was, a uh, was um, making their movie, but it might not be as much of an issue now. But yeah, I can't find any uh, information on this being like based on a book or something. Yeah, or like not like a book other than uh, 1980 Stein Frankenstein, the modern Prometheus. But um, yeah, 
I think it's just, I don't think that was, uh, I don't think legal issues were a big uh, issue for this. And frankly, um, there's a lot of um, good literary reason not to make Frankenstein look like he does in the 1940s one. Oh no, it started off so promising. Yeah, um, same. I like the concept. Hmm. I like the idea. I don't like how they tried to, like, sexy up Igor <laughs> with Daniel Radcliffe. <laughs> they do um, do that, don't they? I don't like the fact that they're like, well yeah 100 percent. feels kind of like really dumb um i don't like how they like instantly wrote out the fact that like igor was this uh hunchback mm -hmm. like they took that away from him like that was like his one i wouldn't say redeeming quality but it's like one of his like more famous qualities within the the whole entire uh history of frankenstein it, I would say history of Frankenstein, but he wasn't actually a part of the history of Frankenstein. He was a prop added in by uh, Bella Lugosi or the people who run Universal at that point in time. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it was directed by Bella Lugosi or Bella Lugosi just acted in it. But well, I, well, it's, again, okay. it's uh, it's um, Boris Karlov is um the guy who plays Frankenstein, although. I don't know. Is Bor is uh, Bell Lugosi in Bell? It's a bit. It's weird because like yeah, those I'm are all made by the same company. Um, I don't know if he's in the original Frankenstein. I can't remember. Uh, filmography. Uh, Igor, or sometimes he's Igor as a stock character. Sometimes Hunchback Laboratory citizens. To many type of gothic villains or a fiendish character who assisted only himself. The later is most prominently portrayed by Bela Lugosi in Son of Frankenstein and The Ghost of Frankenstein, 1942 and 1939. So, yeah, he's pretty, Igor was portrayed by Bela Lugosi. Um, yeah, I don't know, based on the character from me, in the first Frankenstein, Fritz, there was another character who was not even named Igor at that point in time, was named fritz and he was in the original 1931 uh frankenstein movie which i'm assuming was also universal but i could be wrong yeah it was a universal picture uh yeah there's no it doesn't seem like there's an igor character in the uh 31 frankenstein but uh they do, yeah. He does play Igor. I, he, uh, Bela Lugosi does play Igor in the sequels, and then he eventually plays Frankenstein in a late, the Frankenstein's monster in a later sequel. Still, uh, because it's still uh, Boris Karloff as the original Frankenstein, so it's um, Dwight Fry as the character Fritz. But uh, they cast Colin Clive as Henry Frankenstein. So they, they got the name Henry from somewhere. And like I feel like this is kind of a small nod. Yeah, I think Henry Car Frankenstein is And also a he is Swiss. According Wait. to his Wikipedia page, uh, Victor Frankenstein is Swiss. Okay, that's... At least in Mary Shelley's, like novel so <laughs> that okay uh frankenstein ethnicity i gotta look this up because it's yeah. yeah fuck he's okay anna uh yeah i mean if, really really when you think about it um aren't the swiss just italian germans <laughs> i i don't really think that's a <laughs> true <laughs> that's that's it might be yeah. borderline racist to say is, uh... <laughs> that's a joke i stole or they're i think uh yeah that like the swiss are italian germans the belgians are french germans and uh the dutch are english germans i don't know how that goes precisely anyway moving on yeah uh, so like to read reiterate on what i was saying i was like gonna end up rating this film and i, I got sidetracked yeah. so I'd, I'd say probably like a three 
Yeah, I'm going to stick with three. <laughs> I'll give it a six because I just barely enjoy it. Yeah, I thought about saying that I enjoyed it enough to warrant like a higher score, but really in actuality, I didn't. The, the ending was so lackluster that it kind of just spoiled the rest of the movie for me. And uh, besides that, like, I don't know. I don't really respect Igor as a character, mostly because it's like, I like Daniel Radcliffe, but it, it, it doesn't do enough for me having him play the character because the character is so, I don't know, underdeveloped, I guess. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of like it. I think, I think if this had a better ending, it would be, if the ending was good. If I if like I, I thought the ending was good, I think I'd maybe give this a high seven, but um, I feel like the ending's taking away a point and a half. So then the whole love triangle thing kind of really angered me. Yeah. Where, they, where they, it's not even a love triangle. I wouldn't really call it a love triangle. It's like, uh, Lorelai and Igor love each other. Igor. It, is so loyal to Frankenstein. Frankenstein's low key in love with himself that he's like, you need to do this for me. I saved your life. You're just like, and I think even that at one point in time, he called them like something like really off putting where I'm like, this is not a good character. And like, I can't even remember what he said. He's like, you'd probably be dead if it weren't for me dead in the circus. And then like, Okay. At this point in time, you're not much better than a circus performer. I feel like there's a version of the reality where this movie is like 50% better and there's a lot of people shipping Igor and uh, Victor Frankenstein. Yeah, probably. Yeah, no, Um, like I, I made a joke in my, like my notes, I think, that like uh, Lorelai was functioning as that guy's beard and... Uh, Igor was sort of functioning as Victor's reverse beard, which I don't know if yeah. there's a word for that. Some guy you stick around to make it think and make people think you're gay. A Larry? A Chuck? I haven't seen that movie. <laughs> Chuck, I'm, I'm referring to, know. I pronounce you Chuck and Larry. Because I think that's the. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I just. Yeah. Won't. But that movie's about? No. 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 Maybe? Yes. Yeah. It's about two guys who try and, like, defraud the government of, like, a retirement plan by, I, or how I think they're just defrauding an insurance they, company. Gay. I don't know. Pretty much. Yeah, because, like, uh, the deal was that, like, um, you don't get your full, uh, like, um, you don't, oh, it's, it was a pension. It was the pension company. You don't get your full pension unless you're married. And then, so, uh, Chuck and Larry decide to get married so that they can get that full pension. Yeah. And that was the plot of the movie. And then, yeah. Anyway, moving on. Uh, I don't know. What are we, what are we doing next for this? Not a clue. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> I don't know. What? Um, I think I have an idea, but I'm just a, what episode we need to are talk we talk about on? that film at some point in time for time, but at this point in time, that movie made $187 million. Which one? Sorry? I wasn't paying attention. I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. Yeah, I think that movie did I now did pronounce well. you Chuck and Larry. It, yeah, I think it, that movie did well. It, like, made $187 million. It profited $100 million okay. by our estimation. Or if, like yeah. thirty million dollars, but still, like it, it's it... gross. Um, Want to do? Uh... Well, when is Pride Month? Oh, uh, I think it's this month. Pride Month last month, or is no? It's this, this month. month. Oh, yeah, we could do something for that. Okay, that's a good thing Wanted to do. To do, uh, yeah. Okay, it is June. Did you have something in mind? Uh, yeah. Uh, I'll send it to you and we'll get back to you on that one. Yeah, we'll try to get that out done in June. Sorry it's been a while since we posted the last one. We've been trying to get the other show up and running and uh, haven't. Um, I started a new job recently and that's part of it. 
and uh, also is just finishing up a and d campaign, which was also a part of it. Yeah, we'll probably do try to do an episode for Pride Month, um, and then I don't know, review some, I don't know, review something interesting like uh, some independent film or I'm kind of throwing my old list out a bit here, um, some independent film or some uh, German movie because I need some German. I, I'm disappointed that Victor Frankenstein isn't German, so I need to watch something German. Anyway, yeah, uh, see you soon. See you before the end of the month. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. Bye.